Hi, I'm Carmela with the City of Raleigh. You may recognize me from visiting your school. I usually have a great big green and virus gate box with me. And today we are going to learn about what stormwater is, why it's important to manage it, and how we can help reduce the harmful effects it can have on our environment and our water. So let's get started. First, let's talk about what stormwater is. Stormwater is precipitation in any form. We mostly see rain and hail here in Raleigh, but snow and ice melt count as stormwater too. All water is the same, but it's how we use it and manage it that is different. There are three different pipe systems here in Raleigh that run underground. They carry water to and from our homes and businesses and to our local streams. There are pipes for drinking water and wastewater and then stormwater pipes. They are all separate and all do different jobs. We are all familiar with our drinking water and our wastewater pipes. They're part of our everyday life. But what does the stormwater pipes or the stormwater system do? When it rains, the stormwater pipes carry the water off of our hard and permeable surfaces. Those are surfaces that don't allow the rainwater to soak into the ground through the system to the nearest stream or creek. This helps to protect our homes and our roadways and our businesses and us from hazardous flooding and erosion in our waterways. Now that we have the background, let's talk about stormwater runoff. I've got my watershed model here with me. And a watershed is an area of land where all the water flows to one larger water body. Think of a funnel. So in watersheds, the land and how the water flows is determined by the hills and valleys on that land. So we'll have open space area, typical of what we have here at Walnut Creek, where the water soaks directly into the ground. Then we might have residential areas where our neighborhoods are. We'll have some greenways and golf course areas where homes may back up to them. We'll have um, commercial and businesses, schools, lots of roadways, bridges, overpasses, and not far from Raleigh, we'll even have still a lot of farmlands. And so there are stormwater and stormwater runoff everywhere in our watershed. All right, now that we have all of our impervious surfaces on our watershed, let's talk about the storm drainage system and those impervious surfaces. When it rains here in Raleigh or any part of the country, when we have these hard impermeable or impervious surfaces like our roadways, our rooftops, our parking lots, our driveways, our bridges and underpasses, the water just hits these hard surfaces and it runs off into the nearest storm drain, which then goes into the nearest creek or stream. And in Raleigh, our streams and our creeks will eventually end up dumping into the Noose River. From the Noose River, it'll travel to the intercoastal waterways and eventually to the Atlantic Ocean. Right now, in our lake, we have some pretty clean water. But once we start adding some pollutants to our watershed, and these are common pollutants that we see in use every day, things will change in that water. So let's take another look at the watershed again. Residential, buildings, commercial schools, roadways, storm drainage system, drainage ditches, and even farmlands. So now let's add our pollutants to our watershed. First, we'll start with trash. Trash is the easiest pollutant that we can eliminate in our environment. Lots of it is recyclable or it just goes in the trash can. And trash can be things like uh, bottles, glass bottles, paper cups, 
styrofoam, cans, um, bags, plastic bags, paper bags, and even grass and yard clippings. Grass and yard clippings really are important um, for our waterways. Most people won't think that they're considered trash, but they are because naturally if they just fall on the ground, that's where they're supposed to be. It's when we humans actually sweep or blow or dump them into the storm drainage system or directly into the creek or stream that causes an impact. Once they are in the storm drainage system, they will tend to get wet and build up. Over time, that can lead to flooding on our roadways and maybe even your home or your office building. Plus, those, that grass and those yard clippings may have residue from chemicals that we've placed in our yards. When that gets into the storm drainage system and eventually flows to the streams and the creeks, it impacts the water where the critters live and the animals and the plant life there. So let's add some everyday common trash to our watershed. You might have the trash can overflowed. You might have this person uh, just threw something out their car window. You might have perhaps someone left their lunch bag or cigarette butts or coffee cup in the parking lot of the mall. You'll find it along the sides of most of our roadways, already probably in our streams and ditches, and maybe some already in the creek. Our next pol common pollutant is pet waste. This is a really simple one to help eliminate or control as well. Most people are really good about taking a bag and picking up their pet waste when they're walking them in their yard, in their neighborhoods, and throwing that bag into the trash can. But we all know that some people don't, and so we might find some trash on the side of the roads in our neighborhood. We might see some at one of our local parks where we have lots of geese. We'll definitely have some in a natural area like at Umstead Park. And we're gonna have some for sure on our farmlands where we might have cows and chickens and goats and all kinds of other farm animals. But the farmer, he's pretty smart. He's gonna do something with that manure from his animals and he's gonna turn it, he's gonna compost it and he's gonna turn it into fertil natural fertilizer for his crops. So pet waste, animal waste. The next pollutant that we commonly see in our watershed is overuse of fertilizers and pesticides. Fertilizer is used to make things grow but it's important to read the directions on the bag and never ever apply it on a rainy day such as today or any other rainy day because it'll just wash off directly into the storm drain and into the nearest creek. So you will find folks using um, fertilizer if this was a golf course maybe if you just moved into a new home and they just put in your yard and the farmer may have to utilize some store-bought fertilizer as well if he didn't have any natural left. Fertilizer contains a lot of phosphorus and it will be harmful to the water. Going hand in hand with um, fertilizer pesticides. Pesticides are used to control weeds and bugs on our plants and things. So again, you'll see it most frequently used in the same places that you have found folks add fertilizer. And the farmer is gonna use it because he makes his livelihood from the land and from his crops. Our next pollutant is oil and gasoline. 
We have lots of cars and roadways here in Raleigh. What most people think of when they think about oil and gasoline is a spill. And that's true. And we encourage you to keep your cars and your vehicles in good working condition so that you don't dump oil and gasoline on our roadways. But cars and vehicles and trucks and farm equipment and construction equipment all leave behind residue of oil and gasoline. They also leave behind tiny particle shavings off the gears and the brake pads. They may not be noticeable to you, but they will be picked up in the stormwater runoff when it rains. And so we'll have some oil and gasoline on all of our roadways just from the constant use. We may have some in concentrated areas where you find um, construction equipment. You'll find it for sure in parking lots where cars are sitting eight and 10 hours a day. This car may actually be leaking as it's driving down the roadway. And the farm equipment may be leaking as well. The last pollutant is sediment. And sediment is dirt or stones that have broken down they're particles that mix in with the water when it rains in the stormwater flow. And it carries that into the storm drainage system. It's harmful for the system because it builds up and can help to contribute to flooding on the streets and roads. But once it hits our creeks and streams, there's erosion issues that go with it. And also it makes the water cloudy and turbid and then that's harmful to the fish and the animals in that area. So sediment. Sediment you'll find in areas that have not been developed or on hard, sur hard packed surfaces that have no greenery at all. Sometimes you'll see it at the edges of the roadway where the water pounding on the streets has eroded the side of the road ditch and you'll see exposed earth there. These are all common pollutants in our environment in our daily life and so many of them that we can help to control so it's less harmful to our lakes and streams. Now, What's going to happen when we make it rain? Well, our water at the bottom of our watershed was pretty decent before. And now when it rains, all these pollutants are going to go down the sides of the roads, off our hard and permeable surfaces, including the tops of our buildings where there's shingles. And it's going to flow into our watershed. So let's make it rain. As you can see, the water is flowing over the hills and valleys in our watershed. It's being carried by the sides of the ditches on the sides of the roads. It's flowing over um, the roadways, the overpasses, down into our storm drain system, and eventually, for us here in Raleigh, into the news. How can we help this? What can we do to help? Clean up after your pet. Don't use excessive fertilizer and pesticides in your yards. Don't rake leaves or grass clippings directly into the storm drain or the street. Keep your cars and your vehicles in good working condition. And don't trash our streams. We want clean water for us and for everyone. Thanks.